Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the most interesting urban development news I found in recent days. And by the way, I make these episodes weekly, so subscribe to the channel not to miss the future content. And we start with being happy for Paris. Again. This time it's because they continue to develop their tram network and have launched a 3.2 km extension of the line 3B. The new section has seven stops, three of which provide a transfer to the subway or city train. The total length of this line, which runs around the center of Paris, has now reached 17.5 km and trams run at 4 minute headways during rush hours and 8 minutes at other times. This line is the busiest in Paris and serves 300,000 passengers daily. Of course, to transport such a huge amount of people, you need a lot of rolling stocks, so the city purchased an additional 9 trams for this extension, bringing the total number of trams only on this line to 72, of which 39 operate only during peak hours. The total budget of this extension is 200 million euros, of which 60% was paid by the city, 28 by the region and another 12% was added by the national government through European Union funds. Apart from that, the city will spend 5 million euros annually to cover the line's operation costs. And one more extension is planned in the future, which should completely close the ring that will run around the city center. In general, Paris is one of the most illustrative examples of cities that have revived their tram after complete abandonment. The old Parisian tram system was one of the largest in the world, but in 1938 it was completely closed. And the modern system operates since 1992 and consists of 14 routes with a total length of 186 kilometers, all of which combined serve more than a million passengers daily. Well, Paris is doing well again and we are moving to the next news. Meanwhile, Florida governor Ron DeSantis has refused to fund the construction and operation of the Brightline high-speed rail. Well, yeah, nothing new here, the Republican governor is opposing development of public transportation. Again. This Wednesday, DeSantis signed a bill that addressed road projects and congestion issues. It includes $2.4 billion for the widening of Interstate 4, but they removed $50 million for the rail corridor in the highway right-of-way needed to extend Brightline service to Tampa. It's privately funded. I mean, we are not going to be on the hook as the state with the taxpayers for doing trains. DeSantis said. Whoa, what a planning! So you are saving 2% of the cost on the railway that could have transported all those people who are now stuck in traffic, which is why you are spending all this 2.4 billion? <laughs> it's goddamn genius. Although, why do you need these trains if you can just call Uber, right? <laughs> oh. Meanwhile, US President Joe Biden doesn't give up on building a high-speed rail in Texas using a Japanese technology. The White House is planning to make announcement on this matter soon after negotiations between Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. It is planned that trains will accelerate to 320 km per hour and the travel time between Dallas and Houston will be 90 minutes. And according to some estimates, the construction cost could reach 30 billion dollars. Well, that's great, but who is the governor of Texas? Oh yeah, right, good luck with that. The first low-floor tram made by Mother Trans has arrived to the city of Waltersdorf near Berlin. I mean, it's the first one in Germany, because there are already quite a few trams from this manufacturer in Poland, where they are actually produced. The Waltersdorf system is quite tiny. It has only one 5.6 km long line, which still uses Gotha wagons made in the 1950s, so new low-floor trams are quite a significant upgrade. These new wagons are a single section, 15 meters long and have doors on both sides of the body. And in total, Waltersdorf has ordered four of them. 
The Canadian city of Montreal has allocated $30 million for bicycle infrastructure development in 2024. This initiative covers 29 projects with a total length of 32 kilometers. It includes creation of separated bike lanes with buffer zones and traffic lights to make cycling as safe as possible and encourage more people to choose bicycles to get around the city. And an important part of this process is also the creation of a city bike rental system. In Montevideo, the capital of Uruguay, they are working on a project to build a tram train line that will connect the city center with the Alpinar district. Its total length should be 35 kilometers and the travel time should be reduced by half compared to buses due to the higher priority. Interesting that the project was initiated by several private companies and now the Ministry of Transport is managing its preliminary studies. The line is to have several routes which will differ by length. There will be shorter ones to run more frequently and longer ones to run at bigger headways. Along with the launch of tram, bus lines should also be reorganized and, by the way, now they are the only option in the city. One of the benefits of tram line will be savings on governmental subsidies for diesel fuel, which amount now is two-thirds of its final price. This will save about 4.7 million US dollars annually, which the state will no longer spend on on fossil fuel purchases. The construction is currently expected to take three years and cost 521 million US dollars with a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank as a source of funding. The French parliament passed a law that says that in the countryside cannot be a reason for complaints. This law happened because quite a few people moved to the countryside, away from the urban noise, looking for peace and quiet and suddenly found out that the countryside isn't so quiet. There are cows, cocks, cicadas, tractors and lots of other things. There was even a case when the gendarmes came to one house to confiscate frogs from a pond after neighbors complained. And the courts were overwhelmed by this kind of complaints. In general, this is a very interesting and controversial topic. On the one hand, before moving somewhere, you have to weigh the pros and cons and generally have respect for the way of life in the place you are moving to. But on the other, any idea can be taken to the point of absurdity. It's the same here. If you've just arrived, do you have no rights to criticize at all? Then you can also say somewhere that you can't criticize traffic jams, pollution or something like that. Because sometimes things like this are better notized by someone new, but not by those who have lived like this all their lives and just used to it. There is a very thin line here and I don't really know where exactly it is. I guess it depends on situation and what do you think about it? And that's all for now, thanks for watching and see you next time. And in total wal and in total Walter <laughs>